Join us to navigate your awakening as we share the ancient science of transformation. Practicing this ancient wisdom will help you tune into your power and unlock your greatest potential. If you are ready to embark on your awakening and discover your soul path, then please welcome your host and transformation expert, Trinais. Welcome to Navigating the Awakening. I am your host, Trinace. Thank you for joining me today. I greet you in the love and in the light of the Infinite Creator. I would like to begin with the internal light meditation so that we can all align our energies with the cosmos, with the universal light of source. If you are driving or listening to this and not able to close your eyes, then please simply open your heart and allow the intention of healing to move through you. Allow each breath to relax you more and more as we go deeper. Let's begin. First breath in. Breathe out. Breathe in. Breathe out. Third breath in. Breathe out. Relax. Allow your breaths to find their natural rhythm. With each breath in, allow yourself to become centered and focused. And with each exhalation, release all tension and stress, any mental distractions or images. And allow yourself to be in this moment in meditation. Focus your attention on the center of your chest. See your internal light as it illuminates your heart, as it fills your heart with brilliant, healing white light. Continue to see this light as it grows brighter and brighter from within your heart, removing all heavy, negative, or dark energies, and allowing your heart to be filled with peace, love, joy, and forgiveness, releasing all heavy, negative, or dark energies. Continue to see this light as it grows brighter and brighter as it moves in all directions throughout your chest, moving into your lungs, feeling your lungs with healing energies, and allowing the lungs to be free, to breathe deeply, to release any toxins or blockages, allowing each and every breath to ground you, to revitalize and rejuvenate you on every level. And now see the red blood cells that pass through the lungs and the heart as they are filled with brilliant healing white light, bringing you into perfect balance, perfect health, allowing each and every red blood cell to move through your body to every extremity, carrying the life-giving energies with it. And now see the light as it moves up into your shoulders, down in your arms, your elbows, your forearms, your wrists, moving into your palms and fingertips, allowing for healing energies to flow through your palms, radiating out into the world and all around you. Continue to see this light as it moves up through your neck, Releasing tension and stress, moving into your cheeks, your ears, your nose, your eyes, your forehead, and moving up into your crown, activating the connection with your higher self, allowing for clear communication, clear downloads. And now see this light as it flows down into the diaphragm and the stomach, bringing healing to these organs of digestion and deeper breathing. 
Continue to see the light as it flows into the small intestine and the large, activating your ability to absorb your light energies within your nutrients. Continue to see the light as it moves into your kidneys, your liver, your gallbladder, your spleen, your pancreas, and your bladder. All of your organs, tissues, and cells are now filled with healing light, bringing you into perfect balance, perfect health, aligning you with all that is good, all that is desired. Continue to see the light as it moves into the colon, the uterus, the sex organs, bringing healing to these organs of release and reproduction, allowing for internal healing on every level, giving you the courage and the wisdom to know when to release all energies that no longer serve your highest good. And now see the light as it passes through your hips, moving through your thighs, your knees, your calves, your ankles, and into the soles of your feet. You are now filled with healing light. This energy is abundant within your body, your mind, and your spirit, bringing you to the highest levels of vibration that are possible for you right now. Continue to see the light as it flows through the soles of your feet, turning into silver cords that move deep into Mother Earth, that ground you, that anchor you to Mother Earth, allowing for any excess energies that are within your body, mind, spirit, complex, to move through these cords deep into Mother Earth to be reused, recycled, to create something beautiful. And now continue to see your light as it grows brighter and brighter within your body and now moves throughout each and every pore and now is all around you. You are now surrounded in a beautiful healing bubble of white light. Allow all of the colors of the rainbow to feel this light that is within you and all around you. Allow your organs, tissues, and cells to absorb any of these colors that are needed to bring you into perfect balance, perfect health. And now continue to see this light as it moves out, becoming brighter and brighter with each and every breath, spreading into the space where you are, into the room, feeling it completely with healing energies, raising the vibration of the space in which you are in, bringing protection, increasing love and peace, and allowing for any person, any living being that passes through this light to be increased in vibration and healing energies. And now continue to see your light as it passes through the walls the floor, the ceiling, moving out into your extended environment, your village, your town, your city, feeling the area with love, light, peace, joy, and forgiveness, allowing for the increase of all of these within your environment, your town your space, until it fills your country where all of the people and any other living being that comes in contact with this light are raised in vibration, quickened in their spirit. Continue to see this light as it now spreads out throughout your country and now throughout the world where all of our lights join together 
as we are one in the light, as we share our hearts and our love, as we increase this planet in vibration with our love light energy, raising it each and every day, degree by degree, allowing Mother Earth to ascend into the fifth dimension, bringing all living beings who desire to go with Mother Earth as we travel as one in our love and light through the dimensions of time and space, protected by our light and our love. We now continue to send this light out as we are all increased, we are all connected, we are all one. We spread this light throughout our universe and our multiverse to unite with all other lights, all other beings that desire to be one with us and our love and our light and our joy, our peace and our forgiveness. And so it is. Thank you. Thank you, family. My heart is just vibrating so fast. It's incredible. Thank you so much. Oh, it's getting more and more powerful. All right, so let's get started. It's kind of hard to come back from all of that. We will now begin a deep discussion on the seven levels of chi. We will discuss how energy and consciousness evolves in human beings. And I suggest that you get a pencil or a pen and get ready to take notes because this is going to be pretty deep. Now, last week we spoke about the energy reserves and the energy reservoirs within the body and how intelligent energy moves up through the feet and collects in the lower dantian as it passes through the legs and the root chakra. And this area, the lower dantian, is just behind the belly button. And then how the energy progresses through the body, changing form, becoming stronger and stronger if it is not depleted. As the energy grows in strength, you become more and more powerful. But most people never experience this because their energy rarely moves beyond the first reservoir, which is the lower dantian, deep behind the belly button. This is due to the fact that the majority of people deplete their energy reserves through overindulgence of some kind or from the indulgence of negativity or being stressed out in life. This will zap and sap your energy. So most people never find out how powerful they truly can be. Now today we are going to talk about the seven levels of chi. This is very much connected to our discussion last week. So I want you to keep that in mind. But we will dive deeper now into how your energy level affects your state of consciousness and vice versa. The seven levels of chi can manifest in your life in many ways. These levels represent states of consciousness as well as true levels of power within the mind and the body. This is life force energy. As modern day humans, we have not been taught about this power that is stored within our bodies and our minds, nor have we been taught how to protect it or develop it. So today we will touch on each level so that you can understand and understand why it is so important for you to develop this intelligent energy and protect it from being depleted. Your level of chi is directly related to your reserves of life force energy within your body, mind, and spirit. The lower your reserves, the lower your level of power. And it's directly connected to your energy levels. Literally, you feel sapped and zapped. You need a lot of sleep. Now, we go through different stages when we're moving through the awakening. 
So there will be different times when you will feel extra tired because your body is literally going through a metamorphosis. You are literally changing. You are becoming more light, more etheric energy, and you're shedding the dense energy of the body. And so this is natural. So we're not necessarily talking about that. So if you just feel tired at this time, there's a lot going on around us in our universe. We have a lot of changes, a lot of shifts. So you may feel a little less enthusiastic or less energetic at times. But this is really talking about the reserves of chi. And it is related, but there are different things that affect you. So I want you to keep your mind open. I don't want you to start finding out, you know, am I in that level? Is that me because I need sleep? (laughs) That's not what I'm talking about. So I really want you to listen to what I'm saying and take some notes, okay? So... The lower your reserves, the lower your level of power. So when we look at what the ancients taught us about our abilities to um, be telepathic and to have telekinesis, move things with our mind, this is what we're talking about. These reserves help you to reach those levels, okay? So when you have lower reserves within the body, it's caused by something. And this is related to lower states of consciousness, okay, and toxicity. So your level of power is directly related to your ability to carry and channel intelligent energy, which is connected to your life force. And you remember we talked about this several times, about the ability to carry that intelligent energy. Your body needs to be strong. And so you have to start detoxing, strengthening the body through exercise, doing lots of things, meditation, lots of things you have to start doing in order to be able to carry and channel this energy because you need to be like a 220 line where you can carry that very strong wattage and it won't blow you out, okay? So it is the power that you use to create and manifest your reality, this life force energy. This chi or life force is what you use to transform thought into matter. It is literal. So depending on what level you have, within your mind and body will determine your ability to manifest and transform your reality. I'm going to give you an example. Now, if you are sick or in poor health, then your vital energy is low. And depending on how sick you are will determine how low your vital energy is. This can also be said for people who are toxic. If your body is full of toxins, whether those are mental toxins or physical toxins, which mental toxins become physical toxins, then you have and will have a very low vitality. And it will be much easier for you to get sick or for your body to be very weak. So you do not have the power to manifest your dreams in a sick state. And that makes sense, doesn't it? Now, let's look at the first level of chi, or what we call the first level of power. This level is referred to as gutter chi. And at this level, there is almost no life force. There is very little light within the being that is on this level. Now, these are the beings that we call demons and things of this nature. Now, they can be incarnated. So that means these people have no joy or these entities have no joy. They have no peace. They have no harmony and no love. They exist in an extremely low state of consciousness. Energetically, this person is poisoned on every level. Their etheric field is extremely dark, and their aura has a terrible smell. These people associate themselves with violence. They enjoy dark, demonic things. They are involved in all manner of evil, and they prefer the night over the day. 
This is the lowest level of chi or life force that a person or entity can have. They literally exist in a state of darkness and they feed off of extremely low vibrational things. The second level of chi is called the level of fear. These people live in a state of fear or they enjoy creating fear in others. On this level, you will not feel safe unless you have an alarm in your home, keep your doors and windows locked at all times, and you will feel the need to carry a weapon of some kind or even pepper spray. In general, they do not feel safe and are always in a state of fear. Even those who instigate fear in others are themselves afraid of something and very distrustful. These people also enjoy violence. They have just a little more life force than the previous group. These are usually the instigators of crimes. They hire the people from level one to commit the crimes. These people feel more powerful because they know how to manipulate others. They are predators and their power is in their ability to get others to believe their lies and illusions. They are very weak in their energy field as well, and as well as their mind, but just a little bit stronger than the first level. Now for the third level of chi. This is called the level of repetition. People on this level live the same pattern of life every day. They are only comfortable in familiar surroundings. Their lives rarely change. They may have the same friends since childhood or high school. These people are not adventurous at all. They don't like to try new things or make new friends. They are very comfortable with keeping life the same. These are your working people who have basically allowed their dreams to vanish. And in some form or another, they've stopped believing in their dreams. They have accepted defeat and are trying to make the most of their lives. They are mostly hardworking people that cannot figure out how to get off the hamster wheel. They are kept in a false reality that creates a belief system that reinforces submission in order to prevent them from awakening. This group is more powerful than groups one and two, but they are manipulated and preyed upon by the people in both of those groups. These people in level three have the greatest chance to awaken and to move up in energy levels, but they must face their fears and break out of their patterns in order to do so. The first three levels are the most powerless levels to be on. These people face lots of depression and physical ailments due to the low levels of chi or energy within their bodies. They stay in a survival mode and are not open to trying new things. These are the people I spoke of earlier who never go beyond the first reservoir of energy, the lower Dantian, due to their fear, overindulgence, stressed out lifestyles, and negativity, among other things. They all deplete their energy reserves through one form or another. Now, let's move on to level four. This is called the awakening level. What happens on this level is the people of level three begin to change their routines and start learning new things. Their consciousness is expanded and they begin to break their old patterns. They become stronger and their energy moves into the next reservoir. Now, remember, this reservoir is in the liver and it is known as wisdom energy. The people on level four are now experiencing the awakening level of consciousness and the power that comes with it. They become interested in learning new ideas and new ways of doing things. They begin to expand their knowledge in different areas. They begin to participate in new experiences and in meeting new people. They start reading books learning new languages, and embracing new technologies. 
they begin to travel and to explore new places. They become comfortable in different settings and around new people. They learn to appreciate different cultures and languages as well as music. Their hearts begin to open, and the richness and possibility of life starts to be realized. The world becomes a better place when the people of level three reach the higher states of consciousness of level four. This is the first level of true power that gives you more freedom in your life. Now, for level five, we begin to tap into the creation level of chi or power. This is where people become even more dedicated to their personal growth and expansion of consciousness. Learning becomes a priority in your life. You begin to make time for meditation and study. You start enrolling in classes that empower you. The people of this level not only learn new things, but they begin to apply the new knowledge to their lives. And this is what causes their lives to truly begin to transform. Many of their dreams begin to manifest. These people now value knowledge and begin to work hard to live their purpose. At this point is when the third reservoir has been activated. The heart is the third reservoir. And this is the level where chi can turn into shin energy, if not depleted. And begin to move up to activate your upper Dantian, your third eye. This is the level where you begin to affect others more deeply. Because your transformation is seen and felt by everyone around you, even strangers. Your life begins to look completely different here. And your level of chi allows you to create more and more of what you desire. You will feel empowered and start to remember your purpose in life and then act upon it. Now, the sixth level of chi is the master energy level. And very few people ever reach this level. But during this time, it is prophesied by the ancients that many will reach this level. In order to make it to this level of power, you must commit your life to your soul path. It takes a lot of commitment and time to accomplish this. But once you reach this level of consciousness and power, you exude confidence in everything that you do. You transform the energy of a room just by walking into it. Your auric field has the power to heal and rebalance others just by being in your presence. Your words have the power to heal and to bring peace to the hearts and minds of those who hear them. Everything masters touch is transformed by their energy. Masters are examples of how to walk your spiritual path. They are successful, not in a materialistic way necessarily, but in a more profound way because they have the power to manifest whatever they need. They openly share their wisdom so that others can find their own path. Masters surround themselves with other masters. They have high standards and success and excellence follow them. They love humanity and have great respect for all people. They are wise and strong in character and in moral strength. This is why they are extremely powerful and can alter reality with their thoughts. Masters have a very high level of chi or life force, and this is why their very presence changes reality. They vibrate so strongly that the very molecules of physical reality begin to shift and alter around them. Masters actively co-create with the universe. You become stronger and stronger as your energy grows in purity. Masters are able to see right through illusions. They are not fooled by any form of illusion or darkness or trickery because they are aware of the truth because they are now becoming the truth. And they help others begin to see this, see through illusions, and to take their power back. Now for the seventh and final level of chi. 
This is known as the God level of Chi. This happens when your Shin energy reaches your crown. And even fewer people ever make it to this level. This is thought of as a myth in our modern times. This is the level where you can move from a physical form into any other form at will. This is the highest level of power or chi. This is the destiny of all masters, of all human beings, really. The energy of this being that we call the God level is extremely powerful. It is pristine. It is dynamic. It is potent. It is sovereign and omnipotent and absolutely pure. These beings are one with the creative force of the universe. They are what you call gods, Brahma, or whatever you choose to call them. They are pure love, pure joy, and pure consciousness. They are pure power. This is the realm of light and wisdom that is able to embody itself on the earth. And this is who we truly are. We are destined to all reach this level of consciousness. And at some point in our soul's journey, we will reach this point. And it is possible. I want you all to know this is absolutely possible. Continue to work on yourselves. Continue to study, to pray, to meditate, to increase the love in your heart for others, to shed the old that no longer serves you, and to strengthen your life and surround yourself with love and peace and joy and forgiveness. And this is what begins to take you to those higher levels and allows you to release all of the stress that is so easy to absorb your energy and the lower levels of consciousness that are out there that you can get caught up in. So you being aware of this allows you to take your power back and then to choose where do you want to be? And how much do you want to grow in this life? Because it is absolutely possible for you to do it. Now, after our station break, we will continue our discussion on Native Earth Astrology and move into the relationships between the air and fire elemental clans. We'll be right back in just a moment. The cutting edge of Conscious Radio, OM Times Radio, IOM FM. Host your show on IOM FM, the radio network of OM Times Media, one of the more recognized brand names in the conscious community, and is backed by the extensive marketing reach of OM Times. Hosting a show on IOM FM immediately connects you with our extensive, dedicated community. Awaken the Healing, Reclaim Your Life is a podcast that will change your life. If you are interested in expanding your consciousness and being self-empowered, then please tune in to our show. You can find us at awakenthehealing.com or on your favorite podcast app or platform. It's time for you to reclaim your life. Ascending Hearts is no ordinary dating site, but a spiritual dating site with a purpose, to link you with your soulmate. We engineer the serendipity so you can trust that you will attune with someone that has the same matching vibration as you. Ascending Hearts, the conscious dating site for the spiritually aware. Try Ascending Hearts for free, ascendinghearts.com. More than 24 million Americans have an autoimmune disorder, and that number continues to grow. I'm Sharon Saylor, and I'm one of those 24 million. To put that number in perspective, cancer affects about 9 million and heart disease up to 22 million. That's why I've brought together top experts and those thriving regardless of their diagnosis to bring you the latest, most up-to-date information. Join me, Sharon Saylor, Friday night, 7 p.m. Eastern, for the Autoimmune Hour on Life Interrupted Radio to find out how to live your life uninterrupted. If I could be you. And you could be me. For just one hour. If you could find a way to get inside each other's mind 
Walk a mile in my shoes. Walk a mile in my shoes. Walk a mile in my shoes. We've all felt left out. And for some, that feeling lasts more than a moment. We can change that. Learn how at belongingbeginswithus.org. Brought to you by the Ad Council. Walk a mile in my shoes. Welcome back to Navigating the Awakening. Now we will continue our discussion on the qualities of the elements and how these energies influence our personal relationships with one another. These qualities affect our personality and make us who we are. We are made up of all the elements in different degrees, and this plays a major role in the way we think and how we behave. So now let's look at the next group of elemental clans that make up air and fire. These are the butterfly and thunderbird clans. And as a reminder, here are some of their qualities. Air is gentle. It's warm. It can be harsh and cold. It is clear. It represents knowledge, quick moving energies like thoughts. It represents the mind. Air is uplifting, it can be exhilarating, it represents freedom and the expansion of consciousness. Now, fire represents heat, it is hot, it can be assertive, it is a primal energy, it represents the life force, it is illumination, it represents change and transformation, it can be related to the spirit, purification and power. Now, Believe it or not, these two clans are complements of one another, and balance and harmony must be cultivated between them. Remember what Lita Richardson said, without balance, you cannot follow the sacred path, and without harmony, you cannot find the sacred path. And I say that our relationships can be the biggest challenge to establishing this harmony and balance in our lives. Now, these elements, air and fire, give life to one another. Fire is within the air, and without oxygen, fire cannot burn. One of the most important things to know about the people of these two clans coming together is that their relationship can be explosive. They must learn how to harmonize their energies in order to work together. But once this harmony is attained, they will be powerful together. So this could be a friendship, a partnership in a business, a couple. It could be siblings or any other combination. Whenever you have complements, you have opposites coming together. And that means a clash is bound to happen because it's the yin-yang energy. And these must come together in order to create. Now, if you are totally unconscious of this, of how these energies play out, then you won't work together to find a balance point. This will be the balance point that you need to come to is a point of harmony between you. And knowing how to do this through awareness is how you can use this combination to make a powerful pair in whatever adventure you are on. Amazingly, these elements can bring the best out of each other. They bring balance to one another and are ideal to work together. The butterfly clan is ruled by the element of air, and these include the raven, otter, and deer people. And the thunderbird clan is ruled by the element of fire, and these include the elk, sturgeon, and red hawk people. It is clear to see how these two elements work well together. Fire cannot exist without air, and the air is composed of fire. They are like one and the same in different forms. These people are creators. When they work together, they create beautiful things. They really need a project to work on together because this brings the best out of them. And they learn how to be a team instead of fighting against one another. 
they can transform reality when they work together because they breathe life into things. They are both very powerful energies, but they must work to find harmony between them before they can create amazing things together. Now, let's look at the members of the Butterfly Clan once again. The raven is made up of air and fire. The otter is air and earth. I'm sorry, air and water. And the deer is air and earth. And now with the Thunderbird clan, the elk is ruled by fire and earth. The sturgeon is fire and water. And the red hawk is fire and air. So when you begin to pair these groups together, you will see that the second element is of great importance. Again, this is how you look to see what you have in common with one another. And you must have something in common in order for you to get along. Or else you will be just like you're from Venus and that person's from Mars. You won't know what you can bring together. You have to have some element in common. So that's why the second element is very important too. When you're starting to look to see, can I work with this person? And again, there's lots of factors playing out here. So now, the main thing you need to understand about the butterfly clan is that they are ruled by air. This makes them very quick in their thinking, in their moving, and if they don't have another element that gives them balance, then they can have the tendency to be very ungrounded people. Water and earth will help to give them more balance. So that would be their second element. And this can be found in your rising moon and sun placement. So you can look at all of those within your birth chart and find the complements here within the sacred hoop of life. The air-fire combination of people, this would be the raven and the red hawk. They have to be conscious of their fiery natures and learn to be more patient, not only with themselves in their own lives, but with other people. They can experience more irritation and quick tempers because they are ruled by this air-fire combination. So it's very important for you to ground yourself and to really get into your other elements so that they can give you more stability. Air people can be very misunderstood because there are two very different types of air people, those that are ungrounded and those that are grounded. Their personalities will be completely different. So you need to know a little bit more about them. They are somewhat of an enigma. They have a tendency to move quickly and think quickly as well. And they can really be bad at this if they're not grounded. You know, they'll be jumping around from this to that. They never get things done. Those are the air signs that are ungrounded because they can't stick to something long enough. But if they have the balance, then they will stick. They will stick to something. And this is why it's very um, difficult to just pin it on them and say, oh, all air people are airheads or whatever people say, or they're just quick moving and, and they're quick tempered and, and that sort of thing. They're not. Everyone is very different. So you have to know what they're made up of. They're made up of different things and that gives them different pers personality traits. So they also can be pegged as having difficulty of making up their minds. So this would be an air person that has a lot of air in their energy when you look at all of their signs, their sun, their moon, and then their rising. They have a lot of air. They can be, uh, find it more difficult to make up their minds. Now, these people must ground themselves more often than others, the air signs. They need the other elements to give them more stability. People of the butterfly clan can be very mysterious and it is easy for them to make themselves invisible. And remember, this is a trait that came with the raven people with their totem, the bloodstone. It gives you the power of invisibility and air people have this power within them. All of them do. But the... Um, Raven people have it even more. So they will 
also do this in relationships. They'll make themselves invisible. They will ghost you if they're not pleased with your actions or your behavior. They'll just cut you off and, you know, you won't get a call from them. They'll just really cut you off. So be aware of this. This is a trait of the of the butterfly clan and especially of the raven people again. But these same people of the butterfly clan can be very different. Some are very warm and friendly and others can be cold and unfriendly. But their nature is to be very pleasant and warm. So if they are being cold, then there could be an imbalance present if you didn't do anything to them to cause them to act like that. Now, people ruled by the air need their freedom. They cannot be tied down, not to a job or a relationship. If they are in a job and they are going to stay there for a long period of time, they have to love it. It's something that they're passionate about. And yes, they can be in relationships and they can be long-term, very loyal. They're very loyal in their energies, but they cannot stand to be tied down. They must feel that they're free to come and go as they please, not with someone, you know, putting their finger on them every minute. They need to feel freedom in their life. Now, this is one of the things you really need to know about the people, the butterfly clan. If you are in a relationship with them or if it's someone you are employing, it's this type of energy. They have to have the freedom to choose. They do not like feeling captured. And if they feel that you are trying to hold on to them, they will break free. This is the nature of the air element. Just think about it. You can't capture air. It, it, air, it just slips through every pore, every hole. It doesn't like to be captured. It needs to be free or it becomes stagnant. And that's not good for anybody. So be conscious of that. This is an attribute and these are the traits of air ruled people. They love their freedom. They love their freedom. They are naturally warm hearted, good people. Very loyal, very loyal people. But again, everybody is different. So you have to study people. So now what do we need to know about the Thunderbird people? These are the elk, the sturgeon, and the red hawk people. The main thing you need to know about these people is that they do not like being smothered. That is a sure way to end any relationship with them. They are ruled by fire. And you know, fire goes out if you smother it. These people must be free to grow. They must feel like they can expand if they want to. Think about a fire. It has to continue to be fed and it has to continue to grow in order for it to continue to burn, right? So it, it is a part of us. The elements that we're made up of create our personality traits, And these people, the fire people, need to find their passion in life and then get busy with it. They need things to do that give them life. So find out where your Mars is and your birth chart, and that will tell you where your passion is in life. It will be within that house. You will need to do something that is related to that house in which your Mars can be found because that is where your passion is. And this will give you life. And the Thunderbird clan need to be very connected to their passion in life or they will be frivolous people. They will be people that jump from one thing to the next because they're looking for that which makes them burn inside, you see? And that's how they'll be about relationships too. Personal relationships of any kind. They want the people in their life to keep them going, to keep them, you know, excited, to keep their fire burning. So fire people need to stay busy. They need things to do, but they must learn how to harness their energies and not waste them. If they don't stay busy, doing something they love, then they will become self-destructive because they have a lot of energy. And just like a fire, they can begin to burn things up that are around them. You see, 
So they have to learn how to harness the energy. People of the Thunderbird clan must learn to contain themselves or they will burn out. Now, this is very important. So you think about fires, we keep them in containers, but that container has to be open at the top, right? Or even if we have a fire pit, we have it contained. We have places for fire to burn because it can burn out of control. So just you, you need to think about this, Thunderbird clan, this is you. You need to learn how to contain your passion. What is it that you're doing? Because you can get all excited about 5,000 things and try to do them all, and that's how you burn yourself out. So you need to contain your passion and then keep yourself burning. And that doesn't mean you can only do one thing. It just means that you need to be conscious of how much you're spreading yourself out because you will burn yourself out. So if you try to do too much, then that is exactly what will happen to you. You'll burn out. So find your passion and then give yourself guidelines. You need to recharge yourself very often. So do the things that help you recharge. Take breaks from work and you need to learn how to play a little because fire people can also be very um, workaholics. Okay, so remember that. Get a little play in your life. Find out things that really charge your battery and make sure that you're doing those things for yourself very often, okay, so that you keep your fire burning. Now, if you are in a relationship with a Thunderbird person, find projects to work on together. This is perfect with them. They love to work on things and they love their passion. So find out what it is that you all have in common, what is both of your passion, and then work on it together. Get some projects to do, and this will bring the best out of your relationship. Now, especially if you are a butterfly clan person and you're working in any type of relationship with uh, one of the Thunderbird clan, then you guys can create amazing things together. You can create amazing things together because you bring life to everything. Just think about that. We breathe air and we need fire to create, right? Fire creates everything. Look at volcanoes, all the earth, volcanic islands. Look at all of the beauty that can be found on those islands. It is the fire and the air that work together that keep life going on this planet. So you will really find that this is the best way to grow your relationship is to find projects to work on together. And you really make great business partners. You can make great relationships, but they can be explosive at first. So every relationship um, is not meant to be an intimate one. Sometimes you'll meet someone that is of that opposite clan and you get along so well that you decide to get married and that doesn't always work out so well because it really wasn't meant for that you work well together figure out where you work best together and then create amazing things together do that and without this combination of air and fire our planet would not be so beautiful and full of life. So think about all of the things that air and fire do together to create life. And these are the things you can do. So these people can bring balance and harmony to one another, to humanity, and they create beauty and joy in the world. This is what this combination does. Remember, it can be explosive at first because fire is very sensitive to air. So if the air starts blowing too hard, then it will put out the fire, right? So air people, you have to be conscious if you're working with a fire clan person, not to come on too strong because they are very sensitive. And depending on how strong they are, now you could be talking about a small wick, a little bit, of, a, a tiny little candle, or you could be talking about a bonfire. Who are you talking about? You know, so you play it by ear. Who are you working with? Somebody could 
use a lot more energy from you and others need you to come on a little bit softer. So air clan people are like, ooh, let's do it. Let's go. And that's why they work well with fire clan people. But they can be ready to go, 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 go. And the fire is not burning strong enough yet to take that air. And so that could be in a relationship as well. So if you're you're dating someone and you're excited about the relationship, you're just, oh, let's get married. I just love this person. And they're the fire person and you're the air person. You're ready to move super quick. And they're like just starting to, you know, let their fire burn a little more and more and more for you. Give them time. Give them time. Air people need to be conscious of moving too fast. Moving too fast into things. They know what they want. They're ready to go if they're grounded. If they're not grounded, then they're jumping from one thing to the other. But this is a beautiful combination. And just think about all the wonderful things you can do together. If you have someone in your life, then start making plans to create together. Think about projects that you can work on together for yourselves, for humanity, for a business. And it is sky is the limit. Literally, sky's the limit. So these are beautiful things to understand about yourself as well, about, as well as the people in your life. Because when you understand yourself better, then you can work with anybody. You know what your limits are. Thank you so much for joining me today. Tune in next week as we explore more relationships between the elemental clans. I leave you in the love and in the light of the infinite creator. Have a beautiful week.